What's up YouTube? In this tutorial, we'll be learning how to build sliders in Webflow using Swiper.js. Here we can use the scroll bar to control our slider. We have pagination dots. We can use our arrow keys on our keyboard or even just scroll left and right to move our slider. This works with multiple instances of a slider on the page. We have options to make it loop infinitely and we'll also look at how to control these using attributes. So let's get started. So we'll have many different slider designs throughout our site, and each slider is gonna go in its own component div that holds the slider content and slider controls together. This keeps the controls linked to the correct slider and allows us to have multiple instances of a slider component on the same page. In our slider titles component, there's classes that Swiper relies on to create draggable functionality. We'll leave these classes completely unstyled so we don't affect other sliders across our site. Instead, we'll give each of these elements a combo class based on the name of their component. So is slider titles in this case? And now we can style each of these elements independently without affecting other sliders. So let's start by building our main slider design. We'll make this component here. So this will be a slider main underscore component. Inside that we have a collection list. The wrapper is gonna get a class of swiper and we'll give it a combo of is slider main to make style adjustments. Swiper is set to overflow hidden by default. We want to switch that to overflow visible so we see excess slides hanging over the edge. Inside that we have our list. This gives a class of swiper dash wrapper and it will get a combo of is slider main. So we can set flexbox to stack all the items side by side. Inside that we have the item. It gets a class of swiper dash slide and we'll give it a combo of is slider main. We want three items in view. So we'll do hundred divided by 3%. And then we also need to set don't shrink or grow. So we have our three items in view here. On tablet, we're gonna switch that to 50% to get two items per the component. And then on mobile portrait, we'll make this 100% so we get one item in view. Next, let's add our pagination and scroll bar controls. These can go anywhere inside our slider component. So we'll go ahead and drop in a div. We'll give it the class of swiper bullet wrapper. This is gonna house our pagination dots. We'll give it a combo of is slider main so we can make style adjustments without affecting other sliders across our site. Inside of that, we can have a placeholder div with the class of swiper bullet. The bullets will get automatically generated on page load based on the number of sliders we have, but we can use this placeholder div to style what they should look like. So we'll go ahead and give it a width and for it to look right, we need to give it a min height instead of height. We'll also go ahead and give it a radius of 50% to perfectly round it off and we'll give it a background color. And then we can go ahead and just duplicate the bullets. Whichever one is active is gonna get a combo class of is active. So we can use that class to style it. Now these dots will look the same across every slider on our site, unless we use custom CSS to give them unique styles. Now we can add our draggable scroll bar. So we'll have a div with the class of swiper drag wrapper, and we'll give it a combo so we don't affect other sliders. And we'll give this a width of 30 ADM, max width of 100% to prevent overflow, a height of 0.9M. Let's give it a radius to round it off and a background color. Inside that we can have the actual draggable piece. So this gets a class of swiper dash drag. We'll give it a combo so we can style this one uniquely. Um, we'll give it a width, but that width will get overridden uh, by swiper based on the number of slides we have. So we can go ahead and give this a border radius and sort of a background color. And then lastly, we have these link blocks to control our slider. We just need to give them classes of swiper dash prev and then swiper dash next for this one. This is what Swiper uses to control the navigation. Let's duplicate our entire section to test having two slider main components on the same page. And we'll limit one of them to only show three items to test how that looks also. In page settings custom code, we've added the Swiper CSS file in the first block and the Swiper JavaScript file in the second block. I've also linked up a code sandbox file underneath to write our code. Let's start with our component name. Our components have the class of slider main underscore component. So we'll go ahead and target this class here. And we're looping through each element with that class and creating a swiper for each of them. And we wanna apply the swiper settings to the swiper div that's inside of this component we're looping through. So if we save and then refresh our page, we'll notice that both of the sliders have the draggable functionality here and the slides default to 100% width. On swiperjs.com, we'll click on API, 
and then we'll head over to the parameters tab. These are all the settings we can apply to our slider. We'll look for one called slides per view, and that is right here. And the default value is one, that's why each slide is full width, but we could pass in a certain number, like five slides per view, or we could pass in auto if we want it to be auto width based on the width we set in Webflow. So we'll go ahead and set slides per view and we'll set that to auto. So if we refresh our page, we have three per view, just like we set in Webflow. If we head down to tablet, we get two per view, just like we set. And then on the next breakpoint down, we get that one slide per view. Let's set the slider speed to 700 milliseconds. The default is 300. We'll also allow the user to control the slider with their arrow keys by putting keyboard true and we'll allow them to control it from scrolling by putting mouse wheel true. So if we save that and we refresh here, notice how the slider moves a little slower. We're also controlling it with our arrow keys or we can swipe left and right or up and down to move the slider. Now, whenever we're swiping on this up and down, we can't scroll the rest of the page. We have to hover off to be able to scroll the rest. So that could be kind of frustrating. So what we're gonna do here is open up an object and we'll add something called force to axis and we'll set that to true. And what this means is the swiper will only change by swiping the direction of the slide. So left and right here, swiping up and down allows us to scroll the rest of the page. Another setting we can add is free mode true. And before what would happen, every time we drag, the slider would sort of snap to its correct place. And every time we swipe, it would change by one slide. But if we refresh with free mode true, now we can drag freely and the sliders sort of never snap into place. And whenever we're scrolling left and right, it's free scrolling, not sort of swiping to change the slide. We can also add slide to click slide true. And whenever we click on a slide, it should slide us to that slide. Another option we have is follow finger false. If we have this set, we need to remove free mode. And what follow finger false does is by default, we sort of can scrub through our slides by dragging and they snap into place. Well, with follow finger false, instead of scrubbing through, every time we drag, it sort of swipes the slide and we're not scrubbing them in real time. If we want some gap between our slides, we can use the space between option. It accepts a value of pixels like this or of percent like this. Now, when we refresh, notice how our slides get this gap added between them, but the edge of the slide doesn't align with the edge of the content anymore. To fix that, we'll have to manually apply a number of slides we want per view, in this case three, and it's gonna override the width we set on our slides in Webflow to make sure three of them can fit in view, including the gap, and it aligns to the edge. Now it's three slides on every breakpoint here, so we wanna adjust that. We'll set these settings to how they need to look on our smallest mobile breakpoint, so one slide per view and a 5% gap. Then we'll override those on different screen sizes. So for mobile landscape, we'll keep one slide per view, but a 4% gap. Here on tablet, we'll do two slides per view with a 3% gap. And on desktop, we'll do three slides per view with a 2% gap. So we're just overriding these settings on different breakpoints. So if we refresh here, we get our three slides per view on desktop, 2% gap. Switch it over to tablet, the gap increases a little bit with two slides per view. And then on down, it's one slide per view. So now we can link up our slider controls. Underneath our breakpoint settings, we'll add settings for pagination, navigation, and scroll bars. We're giving these element custom classes so we can override the default styling that Swiper adds to these elements. So our pagination wrapper is gonna be the Swiper Bullet wrapper inside the current component we're looping through. The active bullet gets a class of is active, and the base class on the bullet is swiper-bullet. It'll be a button HTML element and it'll be clickable to change the slide. Our next and previous arrows are gonna be the swiper next and swiper prev inside our current component. And they're gonna get a combo class of is disabled when we reach the end or the beginning of the slide. We also have our scroll bar. It has a class of swiper drag wrapper and the handle has a class of swiper drag. It's actually draggable, so it's not just a visual indication, but we're allowing the user to drag on that and it will snap to the closest slide on release. So if we save that and we refresh our site here, we'll notice we can actually click these arrows. We can click on our pagination dots and we can drag on the scroll bar and it snaps to the closest slide. There is some base styling that's forcing our swiper bullet wrapper to be 100% width. We want that to be auto width instead. So we'll basically just copy that class. In our page settings custom code, we'll target that class and we'll go ahead and set the width to auto and then save. 
Whenever these arrows are disabled, we want to gray them out. So we're going to copy the class of our button elements and we'll open up an embed. We'll say slider main button with the combo class of is disabled. We'll set it to opacity 0.3 and let's give it pointer events none so that it's not clickable. So now our pagination wrapper is auto width and our arrows are disabled when we reach the end. Another option we have for our sliders is to set them to loop true so they appear infinite in both directions. So this is our first slide here and it's in the active position. This slide's now in the active position and we can keep going through. This slide is actually a duplicate of the first one. So when we bring it over, it resets our list back to the beginning to make this appear infinite. So we get to choose what we want our active class to be on the slide, in this case is active. And I like to set the duplicated slide when it's in the active position to have the same combo class. So they have the same styles when they're active. Whenever our slide's in the active position, we'll wanna grab the image inside and scale it up to 1.2, but we'll want this animation to feel smooth and seamless. So we'll apply a transition here and we'll apply it to transform and we'll make it last 400 milliseconds. So now if I change this to 1.2, notice how it animates to that position and it animates back down. We'll also wanna increase the font size on this text wrapper. So we'll apply a transition and this time it will be to font size. It'll have the same duration of 400 milliseconds. And when we increase the font size, notice how it animates up. And then when we back it down, it animates back down. So inside our embed, we'll target the class of swiper dash slide with the combo class of is active. And then we'll find the slider main sort of text wrapper inside of it. And we'll give that a font size of 2M. Then we can target our active slide again. And this time we'll find the slider main sort of image element inside of it. And we'll scale that image up to a transform of 1.2. So now whenever we add the is active combo class to our slide, Notice how everything inside sort of animates. So if we preview that, we can change our slides and notice how the slide animates whenever it becomes active. One last option we have is centered slides true. And with that applied, the active slide will always be in the middle. So notice how this one's active. And when this goes to the middle position, it becomes active. I'm gonna set loop and centered slides to false for now, and we'll save that. And so this first slider has a clear start and end point. The second slider only has three slides in it, so all the controls are hidden by default. But when we head down to the next breakpoint, we get the controls back because there's enough space to actually be able to move the slider. And when we come back to desktop, the controls are gone. Just because our components share the same code doesn't mean they have to have the same layout or structure. So maybe we remove the arrows from this one and maybe we take the pagination dots, move them up into the top here. Maybe we decide not to have a scroll bar at all in this layout. Um, and maybe we need sort of like different arrows for this sort of design. So I'll just go ahead and drop in a div. I'll give this a class of slider main and I'll call this wrap. And I'll basically put the swiper inside this. I'll make the wrap uh, position relative. And then I'll drop in sort of this custom link block that's position absolute to the wrap with margin auto. So we have this basically over the slider. I'm gonna give the slider sort of a Z index of one. So that way I know it rests underneath these arrows. And then I can go ahead and duplicate this arrow. And maybe I give this first one the class of swiper dash prev. So that's what creates the actual functionality of this being clickable. And then this one will get a class of swiper dash next. And for this, I can absolute it to the other side. And maybe we apply a different transform of like positive 50%. And then for this arrow, I would just remove is reversed. So even though these two components are using slightly different structure and different controls, we're still able to have them working from the same code. If we want a second type of slider that's gonna have completely different settings in code from our main slider component here, we can just duplicate our entire block of code, add another copy underneath, and then we would just create a new component with a different component name. Maybe this is slider vertical component. Then we change out the code to our liking. We can use the same class names like swiper next and prev to control the elements inside of it. And we can just adjust this freely for this totally new component. But what if these two components are mostly the same? They can pretty much use the same code, but we want one to maybe move a little faster and maybe be looping. Well, this is where we can use attributes to customize our slider. So we can create an attribute called loop mode and set its value to true for this one. We can also create another attribute called slider duration and set that to sort of 300 milliseconds and we can publish that. So we'll start by creating the default values for slider components that don't have the attribute applied. So the default value for loop mode will be false. 
and then we'll create an if statement and say if this, which is the component we're looping through, and then we'll get the value of its attribute of loop mode. We'll say if that value equals true, then we'll go ahead and update our loop mode variable to be true instead of false. So components with no attribute applied, this is false. For components that have an attribute of loop mode that's value is true, loop mode will be changed to true. Then we can just take this variable and use it to adjust whatever we'd like in our setting. So maybe that'll toggle loop between true and false. And maybe when it's looping, we also want the slides to be centered. So we'll use that here for centered slides also. The slider with no attributes isn't looping and the focus is on the left. The slider with the attribute is looping and the focus slide is in the middle. We can do the same thing for slider duration. We'll set the default duration to 700 for components that don't have an attribute set. Then we'll create sort of an if statement here. And we're gonna say if this component that we're looping through and we'll get the value of its attribute called slider duration. And we'll check to make sure that attribute does not equal undefined. So we're just making sure that this attribute is set. In that case, we'll update our slider duration variable to be equal to the value of whatever this slider duration attribute is. Now by default, that's gonna return a string like 300 or 700 or whatever we put there, but we need this to be a number type so we can use it in our code. So we'll just add a plus sign in front of this and that converts the string to a number. Then we can take this number for slider duration and plug it into our slider speed. We could use the same process to set attributes for slides per view or really anything else that relies on a number. With that set, our first slider is 700 milliseconds and our second slider is 300 milliseconds. So that wraps up how to build and customize a swiper slider. In my next tutorial, I'll show you how to create this slider using the techniques we've learned so far.